Uh, the tour's been excellent, yeah. Now we're now the last day, as you say, doing an interview in the last day is like... <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. It made all made all the better for having Beckham oh. on tour with us. And I mean that. Yeah. Most definitely. sincerely. <laughs> Favourite show? Tonight, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Favourite show? Good grief. No, so, so I, th I think it's difficult to to, to come up with a, a favourite show right now. You need some time to dwell on it. Yeah, because exactly. I can't remember where we played on the yeah, third day kind of a in the moment. It's a bit of a blur. It's Rotterdam. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Well, that's it. I just, it's, it's, yeah, it was, it was one, one, yeah. one, it's yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, me yeah. when I get back home, you know, get some rested and think, oh, yeah, that was a good show. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. a good show. Yeah. It's, all, it's all it's been fantastic. It's the only way you'll get any exposure, isn't it, really? And, you know, earning money is from CDs, etc. is just doesn't really happen anymore. Mm. Um, so for any serious band, touring is a must. You know, you have to pocket money from merchandise. There's no great deal of money in it. But, uh, but no, local lo 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 gigs are also good, of course. I mean, we, we, yeah, we're, we're festivals around we're just flying for one festival and somewhere or whatever and it's, 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 it's all good. Gigs are gigs. As long as there's there you know, crazy people out there. Touring touring's the most for me the most important thing. Yeah. Um, as I said, exposure, um, you get press there, obviously, obviously selling your merch to get your your name seen around the cities and the countries. Um, really it's the only way for mass exposure these days I think personally. Of course, it's a lot of fun as well. So. Yeah. Yes. 70 minutes on stage. Fun. That's it. That 70 minutes is everything in, in 24 hours. It yeah. seems like such a small amount of time. It does, it was his, isn't it? The, the, the adrenaline and, and everything else is just. Yeah. You can't beat it, really. Yeah. But I seem to be doing a lot of sleep in this time. Yeah, you, you, you always do on tour. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only time I get a rest at home. No, I don't. It's like six hours sleep is all I get every day. Yeah. So it's nice to. 10 hours, 12 hours, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's just, yeah. So, so sometimes you get a bit blase with the whole thing, but then someone will say to you, oh, you influenced me, or this, or, you know, from a fan's perspective, this album saved my life, you know, and we've heard that so often. Oh, yeah, yeah, many, many. Power from Hell and the Force, is the people say, this album saved my life, yeah. you know, whether it be, Suicide, or I mean, we've had that. You know, people as and, and it's Russia, the stories. Russia, incredible. the stories in Russia, incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's complete in, underground. Inspired people, like, yeah. In their youth, like, it's incredible. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Secretly, yeah, yeah. Almost like you probably you know, experienced <laughs> smuggling <laughs> tapes into the country, and then yeah. me meeting in cellars and recording them you know, onto reel to reels, and yeah. fantastic. Actually, hand, hand draw in the sleeves. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, incredible. That's what you call dedication. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what that, that's what keeps us going, really. You know, when you, you hear these stories, yeah, mm -hmm. and, you, and you're on tour in Russia. You you you're traveling by night train, which is really hard, really hard work. And you get to a venue like, oh, <laughs> and then you hear these stories, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all worth it. When I went on tour, I mean, yeah, most bands would have a whatever whatever say set list. We we yeah, we vary it. We can vary it if time allows you know we can add as you know, we, we didn't plan to play children of the sand on this tour um and it was like brainwave beep, 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 light, light bulb i thought oh yes last <laughs> yes and some arabic influence in there i mean it, it suits the song perfectly so yeah we, we, we would vary it i mean we we it would take sort of one run run through of any song we've done in the last well not maybe any song but Certainly, from our catalog, now we, we have you know, half the songs on half, on all the albums. We probably would be able to to pick up, yeah, remember again in a short space of time. So we, we can always add something. Also, we um we will change for certain places. Yes, certain countries or certain cities, maybe. Yeah. According to certain songs that might be offensive. Yeah, even. well, not offensive. I don't worry about that. No, don't no, no. offend okay. anybody. <laughs> but um, no, I mean sometimes you'll go to a 
city or a country that's traditionally old school. Ah, okay. Like Greece, for example, yeah. something like that. So then you, you, you heavily load your set with the early stuff, maybe. And, um, experience, I think, generally. Um, we we kind of know what songs work in yeah. certain places, you know. Well, sometimes you get surprised, but... No, 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 definitely not. I mean, we may try to disguise them, <laughs> but we certainly wouldn't. And, and disguise them as in how? Uh, just send somebody else's lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> or just rewrite them. Yeah, just quickly rewrite That's them. That's what we thought we, when, when we went to China, we may have to submit lyrics. I thought, well, we'll just put the title down and send some other lyrics. <laughs> Rod Stewart or Delton John or something. <laughs> you, you, I, I could never compromise our artistic integrity in, yeah. in any way. That would be, yeah. that would be all kinds of wrong to us as fans. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had some in Holland, haven't we? Yeah, the Dutch. There's a little area in, in the yeah, Netherlands which is Bible very, Bell. very the Bible Bell, Yeah, some pro. We played a festival, but I think they were just protesting at the festival. I mean, Napalm Death were playing as well. So yeah. <laughs> The, the only slightly disturbing one was when we went to Hungary. Um, the promoter told me that there was some guy in particular who was really upset with me. <laughs> and uh, they, were, they were sort of security, were keeping a little watch. But um, there was a weird guy in the show, but whether, whether it was him, I don't know. He was just, just staring at me all night, which was kind of a little disconcerting, you know, but, um, but no, nothing major. Um, but that may change on the next song. <laughs> on the next album? Yeah. Ooh. I have a little plan. Well, obviously the sound changed and the music, it, it's, it was a, it's a progression, you know, when, when the band formed, they couldn't play their instruments. And so as you learn to play your instrument, you're able to master and write better songs. So, yeah, I think every, every album, without exception, every album has been a major step up, even to a certain sanity. Which it was all, which is another kind of wrong, but <laughs> it's still a progression. And I think now on our comeback, you know, we, we Killing Peace, we always said, Killing Peace really should have been the album that came right after the force. Well, when we came back, it, it took a long while didn't, to get back mm -hmm. into the groove, a long time to find our feet. We were writing stuff and rehashing things, and nothing was really working until. The track Killing Peace. As soon as that came together, everything just fell into place. And obviously, being 2007, 2006, when we were writing, it's modern times. It's not the 80s anymore. We're competing against other old school bands who have uh, renewed our identities, if you like, and modern bands as well. So we have to keep relevant or be relevant at the start. To make any kind of impact with them. If we went back and made a real crusty sounding album, I don't think it would have worked. Well, Slayer are the biggest thrash band in the world, I guess, at the moment. Yeah. Playing C all the time. Is it, is it drop? I don't know. Is it is it relevant? Whether what kind of tuning you play? Is it is it, are, are people really that anal or about things like that? It's not yeah, some of them, yeah. Some people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we play in can understand it, we play in three t different types of tuning over the, the more recent stuff. We play in standard D, drop D, and drop C uh, for code black. Yeah. Um, which is various. Yeah. Um, I think we played uh, sound. Of, I think you'll find the sound of violence track is in E flat. Really? Yeah. Oh. Not play live, but we yeah. did it just to make the tonal variance on the album just so things sounded a little more varied. It's pretty healthy when you look what Slayer are doing and stuff. 
there's obviously the mass audience for it still. But when you look at Testament and uh, a creator, Overkill, ourselves, everybody's making some of the best music of their careers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah. it doesn't give the new bands much of a chance, but it's good for the fans, I guess. No. Discharge. <laughs> Oh, I add some more. Give some more. Give him some more. <laughs> uh, Discharge and Motorhead were my are my two main inspirations. Always have been and always will be. Uh, just simply because the attitude of the music, com two completely different styles, but Discharge are influenced by Motorhead also, and yeah. you just you can just see where it. I mean, obviously Motorhead are very bluesy kind of rock metal, if you like, but yeah. but the influence. Just for their attitude and how they approach music. Yes, when when did Motorhead start? I mean, Motorhead came out in the track came out in '77, didn't it? Which was the well, the unless you, it was a, a single Hawkwind yeah. Hawkwind single in '75. Oh, well, the Motorhead track. Yeah, mm. I, re I remember sort of when the the white vinyl single came out. Actually, mm. Motorhead, Motorhead. Um, we used to get it played at the youth club with, with all the soundtracks tracks we were listening to. So. <laughs> So yeah, they, those two are sort of my major influences. Always will. Exploited and the clash, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, with, with punk, there was a lot of DIY stuff that really wasn't that great, you know. And to sort of embrace it with metal was some, something that I really wanted to do, like in Motorhead, and then um, I like Sabbath as well, and then obviously here in the out of. The, the metal scene was evolving in the early 80s and stuff. And, so, and I wanted to be a, a good musician as well. Yeah. Which, I mean, we used to follow Discharge all around the UK, me and my friend, sleeping rough, sleeping wherever, just to, to see the band. And we were seeing them like, God, maybe 40, 50 times a year. And so, why, don't, why, why are we doing this? Why aren't we got our own band if we love this so much? Like, and that's, that's what we did. I was born in the 60s, I'm a child of the 70s, I was exposed to, you know, rock music in the 70s through radio when they played lots of rock music in the 70s. I was lucky enough to go see bands from very early, from 10 years old, I saw my first band. 12 years old, I saw Slade, first of all. And it was just a, a ride from there. You know, we, you had that 70s classic rock. Period, the Purples, Zeppelins, yes, Genesis, blah, 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 all the. Then came, you know, the first wave of punk, which was like, which is a smack in the face. That was incredible, some amazing music. Then you had New Age British Heavy Metal, which the whole DIY thing, the, the first time, you know, it was always DIY. Even punk was DIY, wasn't it? That. Yeah. Definitely. And then every every genre of music that's come along over the years, I still listen to it all. The second wave of punk, the, 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 the likes of Discharge, Vice Squad, GBH, incredible music, and it's just. And now you've got I think every band that's ever existed in the history of music, you know, metal and rock, are here, and they're still active mm -hmm. after all these years. It's incredible. So music is. Encom you know, or all encompassing is if you like something you like it. It's no, you know, it doesn't have to. Be, you don't have to be blinkered and yeah. But especially I, now I just listen to prog on the whole. I just find it challenging. <laughs> I saw the faces. <laughs> like, oh, prog. Oh, 
Prague. <laughs> again, Prague is just a vast. It's like saying, you know, let's just listen to thrash. Thrash within its own genre is vast. Yeah. Vast different. The same with Prague. It's just a vast, vast. You get three minute prog songs, like pop prog, and your 25 minute workouts, you know? Yeah. And uh, music is just, yeah, some quite. Everything's been tried. And it's always this genre thing as well, you know? It's, 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 I hate <laughs> I hate being lumped into a genre. I mean, all right, we're, we're more than the thrash. I feel we're more than the thrash band because we don't just play, you know, mindless thrash for the sake of it you know there's a lot of thought which goes into the songwriting and there's other influences in there as well certainly for me from a vocal point of view mm -hmm. a lot more influence in there it's been it's been fantastic go to america canada south america japan europe That's, i mean it's i don't know when it's going to end it's when the authors <laughs> just keep coming in and in it's like we need to make a new record <laughs> <laughs> but but no we're we we're we're quite lucky, really. But we've we've got a good fan base all around the world, and we've we've played, I think, over seventy different countries, and we've got a lot more coming yeah, out next know. year. It's incredible! It's fantastic. You, you can never buy what we've got. And no. Get. It's amazing. Very fortunate. Yeah, very fortunate. It was just so slow and painstaking back in back in the eighties. Like now, the, the process is completely different. Um, we make an album now in two weeks. Cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, um, we just make, make an album in, in two weeks now because it's just such a simple process of doing all the guitars at home. Um, and the costs, which is the main thing these days, obviously because of the sales are low, if we can keep our recording costs low, yeah. we would make profit for the label, which we're doing, which is why we've been offered an extension to our deal. So. It's working us, working well for us and them. Um, but I still enjoy the process. It's, it's great going in and, and listening to the songs come together, especially when sort of Sai goes in, and then you're out of the studio for a couple of hours. You come back, well, that's, wow! It's like really pulls it all together. And to just to watch it slowly build is incredible. But we we still mix old school style, big desk. Oh. It's obviously it's all digital, but and. Um, Computerized, but they're, they're still using the same desks as what we used back in the eighties. You know, mm -hmm. to get that you, you get that earthy feel out of them rather than just simply mixing digital all the time. But to the live album we recently did, um, that's, that's, our, that's our final in December. Various colours. <laughs> Looking forward to collecting those. It's a collector's thing. I well, well I tell you, we have, we've got so much um, you know, footage like in the bank from festivals and things we played and people have recorded filmed it and you know maybe, maybe one day we do we, we got demos as well old demos from the 80s in the insert of sanity demos which maybe one day we'll see the light of day we're going to re-record in search of sanity yeah that way so there's lots we can be doing but at the moment touring is taking it's over. taking over yeah. <laughs> Uh, I started work on two songs. I've got all the song titles. I've got the album title. Everything's in place. The ideas. I mean, me and Jeff were up till six in the morning, going through things and planning things and chatting about directions and stuff. Hey, in the wise words of Lemmy, "Don't let the bastards grind you down. <laughs> Stay true. Fight the fucking system. Fuck the system." And you will flourish. I hope one day. <laughs> Just keep it fucking course. metal. Dream of coming to play for you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be fantastic if we can make that happen. That would be. A, that would be definitely one of the highlights of my career if we can go and play. Yeah. That would be amazing. There, there, there have been several highlights so far, and every year there's seen like oh another highlight, oh another. Highlight. Yeah. Like China, then, China was just like. Yeah. Wow, that was just There's some things that you'll never ever forget. Yeah. I'm sure that will Yeah, well, hopefully, we will come to Lebanon. <laughs> Before. Sometime, Cheers. yeah. Cheers. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Monday. <laughs> Thanks for the interview.